Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the big scary boogeyman of the alcoholics world, the delirium tremens, the DTs. This is the worst case scenario for alcohol withdrawal and I'm going to tell you the warning signs, the symptoms, what to do about it, what to do instead. I'm going to tell you what the doctors say and I'm also going to tell you a personal story of mine about a grand mal seizure that I had as a direct result from alcohol withdrawal. But first let me introduce myself. My name is James. I am a grateful recovering addict and alcoholic. I have been clean and sober for three years after drinking for two decades, drinking and using drugs. I have experienced the full spectrum, jails, institutions, and death. I tell you my stories here every week in order to help you and loved ones that are suffering from addiction. If you haven't considered, consider subscribing. Check out some of my videos in this lowercase i up here or down in the description. If you're on your phone, you have to hit that drop down arrow. Resources, links to my videos. Check it out. Now, alcohol withdrawal. What used to be a hangover, what used to be a headache for half a day, gradually, if you drink like I did, turns into a, a medical condition called delirium tremens. What is a DT? What is a delirium tremens? Well, around 5% of people with alcohol withdrawal get delirium tremens. Often called the DTs, this extreme reaction is characterized by a severely confused state disorientation, hallucinations with, and alcohol withdrawal seizures. The risk is greater if you've been drinking for a long period of time. People are hospitalized and deaths do occur. There are only two drugs on earth that can produce the outcome of death from withdrawal, and that is benzodiazepines and alcohol. I have a personal story. In 2010, I was roughly at the middle of my drinking escapades and my disease had progressed to the point of drinking every day. This particular episode started with a two-week run of drinking and using this time was benzos, uh, Xanax. I was drinking and using so much that I was blacked out and I would wake up and I would still feel the drugs and alcohol in my body. Benzodiazepines and alcohol affect the CNS, the central nervous system. This is where the danger comes in with withdrawing from them. I had decided that I was going to go cold turkey uh, off of alcohol as I often did up to this point. As a young man, I had many times come away from a heavy drinking weekend and come off with no problem. The years progress, the hangovers became very intense, sleepless nights, sweaty days, and I began to have the shakes. After periods of drinking, I would shake so, so bad that I couldn't hold a beverage. I found myself shaking more as it got closer to my mouth and I would spill beverages and martinis were out of the question. I early on accepted the fact that I was never going to be a martini drinker because that martini glass is far from stable in this shaky hand. Anyway, around 2010 I had been drinking for two weeks and Sunday rolled around and that was usually the day to sober up. Shut myself in a dark room with a TV and water or Gatorade to try to stave off the two weeks or ever, however long that period had been of uh, drinking heavily. Well, in this particular instance, I had a week or two off from work or I wasn't working. I had decided to go on the wagon and do it myself. This is generally a bad idea and I'm about to clarify why. That night, Sunday night, after not drinking all day, was a sleepless night, uh, tossing, turning, sweaty, nightmarish visions, shaking, feeling just like a shell of a person. I woke up in the morning ready with the worst of it I thought had passed, and this was Monday, and went about my day. This was far more than a hangover. I didn't have an appetite. I was exhausted but couldn't sleep. When I closed my eyes, there'd be this flashing, busy thoughts running through my head. Uh, just confusion, racing thoughts, really dark thoughts, and just not well. 
Well, that was Monday, and then Tuesday came, and I'm expecting a better day. And now, this this was uh, slightly, I felt slightly better, was forcing myself to eat soup and stuff. At this point, I was in a medical condition. I was sick. But this is day two. Now, it takes about three days for any substance to clear up nicotine, alcohol, drugs. Around the third day, it's passed. Well, the second day was as uncomfortable as the first, and then the third day came around and I fully expected to be better. Now, I felt better in ways, but there was one particular way that I was not feeling better, and this particular way was different. This day, I had planned to go over to my sister's house. My, my mother was babysitting my niece, my sister's daughter, while she and her husband, while my sister and her husband went out on a dinner date and I was gonna go hang out with my mother and my niece. Well, during the day, I remember it was sunny out and I was in my apartment uh, getting ready to go over there in a few hours and I was going through my mail and I remember there was a blank spot in the form of like this black cloud over my right eye and I couldn't focus or see what I was reading in my mail and I would try to cover my right eye and look through my left and it still wasn't disappearing because this, this black spot was, as I later found out, was in my head. I was basically having blank spots in my vision. And this was, um, this was alarming, confusing, but I have done it many times before so I thought I'd do it this time too, although this was new. So I couldn't see for the life of me, I couldn't focus and I was starting to worry because in this particular run of drinking and, and, and eating Xanax, I had fell flat on my face. My mother said I was at one point standing in her living room and I was standing straight up, she said. I'm 6'4", I was standing straight up and I, she said I fell over directly and she said shook the house when my this front part of my face and head hit the floor. This was upstairs, shook the house. And I was worried, now seeing black spots, I was worried that I had a concussion. I've had concussions before, having spent a life drinking and using and behaving recklessly, I've had five concussions. So I fully expected that I had a concussion. I also was aware of the dangers of alcohol withdrawal, but having never had a seizure or delirium tremens to an extreme nature, I thought I could get away with it one more time. Well, I couldn't see. I called my sister, I told her. She you know, recommended I go see the doctor. I said, no, I'm just gonna come over. And I made the irresponsible decision to drive with a black spot over my vision. Now, luckily, I made it to her house, but on the way I remember driving with one hand over my eye, trying to close one eye, and driving, trying to see, and simultaneously reciting the Our Father. I grew up Catholic, and I remember the Our Father prayer, and that's all I could say, because I was seriously scared. This was a feeling I hadn't felt before. This was the third day without drinking, and I knew something was happening. It was about a 20 minute drive to my sister's house and I took the highway. I remember saying to our father over and over and closing one eye and I made it. Now I'm not religious, um, but it is suggested that sometimes for fools and drunks, God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Well, I did make it to my sister's house and I get in the door and I, I immediately let my mother, my brother-in-law and my sister know that something's up. And I sit down, she gets me an ice pack and I tell them my symptoms. I just sat with my ice pack and waited. And then just like a thousand times before, hoped that it would pass. They went on their date, my brother-in-law and my sister and my mother and my niece and I sat down to watch cloudy with a chance of meatballs. I remember my niece was on the floor, I was sitting here watching, and my 
Mom was on the couch back there folding laundry. I remember thinking as I watched this erratic animation with flashing colors and lights uh, that computer generated images at a high rate, a high speed wasn't too good for my condition. And it was making me feel very uneasy and very uncomfortable and very scared. I remember shutting my eyes and just hanging out. Um, at this point I knew something, something was pending, was coming. And it was a very scary feeling. My niece was into the movie. My mom, whether or not she was watching the movie, was folding laundry, probably keeping an eye on me, but you know, I'm a big boy, I've handled things. None of us expected what was about to happen. I remember after having my eyes closed for a while, just getting up and deciding to go into the kitchen and do some dishes. This was probably just like that Our Father prayer in the car, another foxhole attempt of a man in a desperate situation to cleanse my spirit by doing something for another human being, doing something good for a change. So I was doing my sister's dishes. And I remember while doing the dishes, out of nowhere, the most vivid hallucination I've ever had, in my right eye, there was a black and negative white light pinwheel right off of dead center. And I remember seeing it and putting the dishes down and standing up, not standing up, but backing away from the sink and looking right at it and saying, am I seeing this? I am definitely seeing this. This is a very, this is definitely a hallucination. I later found out after all of this occurred that this is called the aura. Epileptics and people that experience seizures report an aura, which is different for every individual. For me, it was this black and negative white light pinwheel, clear as day. This was the alarm. I dropped everything I'm doing, walked into where my chair was in the living room. My mom was there. Karis was right there and I sat down. My chin, it felt like it was being pulled towards my shoulder. And as it was, I remember saying, Mom, and this inflection in my voice, this accent she later told me was one she's heard before, and it is one of, it means I'm in trouble. That was the last thing I remember was saying that. Woke up on the stretcher, and I looked at the paramedic, or and whoever was carrying me, and they said, you've had a grand mal seizure, and he, he handed me a bucket and I knew immediately that was to throw up in because I was about to throw up. I threw up in the bucket. I remember the ambulance ride. Long story short, the, the things to look out for if you're coming off of alcohol or benzodiazepines, or Xanax, Klonopin, Ativan, any of the benzos, black spots, vision, uh, shaking, dizziness, nauseaness, confusion, these are delirium tremens symptoms. This happened on around the third day, and I ignored it until there was a serious consequence, grand mal seizure, a term that still to this day scares the crap out of me. I saw the aura, and luckily I wasn't behind the wheel, luckily I wasn't in a pool swimming, luckily I wasn't holding a child or operating machinery. These are the ways people die from seizures. That was my one and only seizure from alcohol withdrawal, and I'll remember it. I later, from that point on, after having gotten back into drinking again, discovered detox centers. Detox centers, it's uh, usually a routine of about seven, seven days. They medically treat you for alcohol withdrawal. Ironically enough, this is with benzos, uh, Ativan mostly, which is a mild benzodiazepine, prevents seizures, and it's, a, it's, a, it's like a step down from the heavy drinking for times. And around seven days, you're good to go, and that's when you go to rehab, because if you drink again, your body just elevates right to that level, and then on, and it gets more dangerous and more dangerous. 
Well, that's about it for this week. That's alcohol withdrawal, and uh, don't take it lightly. It is very serious. It's no longer a hangover. If you've been drinking for years and drinking heavily, there is a, a real danger. Question of the day. Scroll down, answer in the comments. What have you experienced with alcohol withdrawal? Have you had a seizure? What did you experience before your seizure? Uh, leave a comment for all of us to, to read. Maybe we can get something from your experience, strength and hope. If you haven't considered, consider subscribing and I'll be here every, I'll see you next week. And until then, keep it clean, keep it real and, and just keep doing this damn thing because you're on the right track.